Now he calls me and he tells me that he's been fired. Where he was working for the last four years, extremely hard working, probably never took a day off, but the boss told him, I exactly know what you did. So his boss takes out this bunch of papers where it's all printed, his WhatsApp conversations with this one woman that he was texting in his office. Just with these seven texts, his three to four years of hard work was overshadowed and he was fired immediately. So today I got the worst call of this year and it was my friend Ashish. Now this guy is an extremely caring guy, extremely gentle guy, a big empath and an extremely nice guy. Now he calls me and he tells me that he's been fired. Now he was due a promotion and all of us we were actually waiting that he will throw his promotion party and this news was actually quite surprising that he'd just been fired from his workplace where he was working for the last four years, extremely hard working, probably never took a day off and I was just amazed. I was like, hey man, you looking forward towards that promotion, what actually happened? And he actually starts telling me his story. He went to the office, he was extremely happy to know that the MD, the managing director had called him in his office and he was really excited and happy thinking that he's going to get that promotion that he was working really hard towards. So he went to the boss's office, but the boss told him to grab a seat, he grabbed a seat and the boss looked at him with his angry eyes and the boss told him in a very firm voice to grab a seat and he was just surprised why is the boss talking to him like this because he was expecting a promotion but the boss told him I exactly know what you did I exactly know what you've been up to and Ashish is surprised he's like hey what is this happening so his boss takes out this bunch of papers where it's all printed his whatsapp conversations with this one woman that he was texting in his office and they were just mere seven texts just with these seven texts his three to four years of hard work was overshadowed and he was fired immediately approaching someone in an office situation can be extremely tricky you have your bosses you have your reputation to protect and you can be fired at a small mistake the approach has to go successful no matter what you need a lot more social intelligence than you approaching girls in a bar or a club or maybe in the daytime location because you are not going to see these girls but in the office it's an all different story you want to see that girl every day so you have to be more socially intelligent to make sure that you only throw intent you only show that you're attracted to her once you get some certain hints from her so you have to be social intelligent enough to understand those hints as well I'm going to talk about eight steps that you need to follow if you want to approach someone in your office successfully. Step one is understanding office dynamics. Now, every workplace has its set of culture and set of unwritten rules that you have to comply with when you're doing those approaches and you have to be extremely mindful of those rules because you don't want to create awkward situations. So before even you approach that girl that you're attracted to, observe how people are treating each other, observe how people are acting with each other and how they're reacting to each other because you want to understand the nature of the relationship. If you like a girl, she's definitely going to have multiple men chasing her because in an office situation, pretty women are actually pretty scarce. So a lot of guys are going to be after her, so you have to approach her in a socially intelligent way where you don't piss any of these guys off so that you don't start unnecessary beefs in your office. Step two is building a foundation. Now this is much easier if it's a new office, if it's a new location, to build the kind of reputation that you want, a reputation of a social guy. But if you're already in the office for many years, then it's very hard to change your reputation that you've built from the start. Now in step two, all you need to do is you need to greet everyone. Now why I say everyone is you don't want to be seen like the creep who's only interacting with women, but you want to be a social guy who's interacting with men and women both. Now you start greeting them and you build a pattern of communication. You start greeting people during breaks and having casual conversations like, hey, how are you doing? Hey, how's your weekend going? What do you do this weekend? And once you've built this pattern of communication, you have built rapport and comfort with a lot of people. All of this helps you in creating a more comfortable environment for doing the approach. Step three is choosing the right moment to do the approach. Now, I don't want you to approach women when they're working, when they're busy, maybe they're getting shouted on by the boss, they're on an assignment and you're going there, hey, how are you doing? What's your name? Avoid that at all costs. Instead, what you need to do is you need to look for breaks, maybe a coffee break, maybe a tea break, maybe a lunch break where you can initiate the conversation. Now, how you're going to do that is you're just going to walk up to the girl and I'm assuming that you've built a pattern of communication with the girl, you're waving at her, you're greeting her every day. Now, what you need to do is when you see her sitting there by herself, all free, you need to strike a conversation. You need to have some little talk with her. You need to tell her, hey, listen, I've been saying hi to you. We're working in the same workplace. I don't even know your name. By the way, my name is Arnav. What's your name? Now, this is a much more natural way to approach. And since she's already saying hi to you, there's a certain level of comfort and rapport that has been built. 
so she's much more likely to respond to you in an affirmative way. Step four is gauging her reactions, how she's responding to you, and understanding a non-verbal communication, which is basically reading her body language. The reason why you want to do this is because in office you have a lot to lose. So you only want to suggest a plan or you only want to show interest when the girl is interested in you. And for that, you need to read her body language. Now for you guys, I've read 36 books on body language, compiled it in a single document, and it includes all the body language movements that you need to be aware of. If you want to know whether the girl is interested in you or not, all you need to do is click on the pinned comment below, download the PDF for completely free, and you will be able to read a girl's body language. Now step five is being respectful and professional. And this is exactly where Ashish lost it. He was not professional. He did not respect the professional boundaries. So when you're doing the approach, make sure that you show her interest, but you show her interest with very lighthearted conversations. You do not tell her that you find her cute. Rather than that, you compliment her on her work. Compliment her on how she thinks. That is going to be much more lighthearted than a compliment you're giving her on her physical looks. Because when you're approaching a girl in the office, you need to maintain that professional boundary. Now, once you've had that conversation with the girl, the next time you have that conversation, try to get her number on a professional pretense. Like, hey, you know, I've wanted your thoughts on some things. Can I grab your number? I really wanted to ask you a couple of questions about this work. And if you cannot do that, maybe she's in a different department, then suggest an outing and try to grab her number like that. Now, step six is where you actually gauge your reactions towards you and you express your intent in a very subtle way and you do this over messaging now i would not recommend doing this face to face when you're in the office because at that part of the time the girl might be thinking who's watching me are the cameras looking at me i hope no one is watching me from my group so you want to reduce all the social pressure and you want to show her interest over text but you also want to make sure that you're at the same level where the woman is because if you're showing too much interest the girl has a history of all the chats and she can share it with the HR. So you need to make sure that the girl is interested in you before you actually show her interest over text. Now, how do you know that the girl is actually interested in you? Is she meeting you in the office, starting conversations by her own self or are you the only one who's starting the conversations? Is she replying to you on time or is she taking two to three days to reply to your texts? If you're really interested in knowing whether she's interested in you or not by reading a non-verbal communication or her body language, click on the pinned comment and download that PDF that I have for you. That's the only thing you need to know when it comes to body language and attraction. Now, step seven is the moment of truth. This is the moment where you actually suggest an outing. Now, I would always recommend going with some lighthearted outing, which is probably a coffee date. Now, when you're suggesting an outing, make sure that it's extremely lighthearted. There's no pressure that you're putting on the girl because she should not feel cornered and she should not feel that she has to say yes to you just because you're a colleague. Always make her feel that she has the option to decline gracefully if she's not interested. Step eight is respecting her response. So no matter what she says, if she agrees, well, that's great. If she does not agree, you still want to maintain that professional boundary. You still want to maintain that professionalism with her. So don't show that you're emotionally affected because she rejected you. Do not show that it changes anything. Whatever you were doing before this, continue doing that so she doesn't see any shift in behavior. Always remember, the goal is to keep the office environment a comfortable place for both of you. So don't make things weird if you get rejected. Instead, just make her your friend. Do not keep staring at her and move on to the next goal peacefully. Now, with all this information, I also want you to understand one thing. Office is not the best place to do the approaches and learn about the skill of approaching. The best places are places where you don't go every day. Whether it's a mall, whether it's a street, a shopping street perhaps, a bar or a club because you don't have to meet these women again. So you can practice this art of approaching and then once you're actually good at it, you should execute this in your office. But if you start learning about approaches and attraction by doing approaches in your own office, that's the recipe for disaster and that's exactly what happened to Ashish. Now, if you do not want to land in a position where Ashish was, all you need to do is click the pinned comment, schedule a call with my team and let's see if you're the right fit to work together.